You've got to tune to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle. You can find us streaming online around the world at KEXP.org. Our good friends King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are here. It is so great to have you here. Thanks for getting up so early. Another fan freaking tastic album, Flying Microtonal Banana, or as you probably say, Banana. Banana. <laughs> here they are now. Let's... Take it away. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live on KEXP. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs>
Maybe, let me look. Uh, um, we can do a sofa round. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live here in the KEXP studios. A new album, Flying Microtonal Banana. They're going to do a swap around. Now Ambrose is going to play the flying. Is, the, is that the flying microtonal banana that you're actually holding there? We've got that on video, so you can. <laughs> quite a time over there. We are good buddies. They are good buddies. There are seven musicians from Melbourne, Australia in this room right now, heading up to Vancouver, by the way, playing the Vogue Theater tonight. Tomorrow they're going to be at Revolution Hall in Portland, Oregon, and then down at the Fillmore in San Francisco on Wednesday night. This one's about bush rangers.
King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are live here in the KEXP studios. And Ambrose is going to pass off the flying microtono banana back to Stu. And then gingerly put the headphones on for him. They look great here in the KEXP studios. Always so great to have all of you here. Wizard live on KEXP, a new album, Flying Microtonal Banana. Thank you all so much for coming in, especially this early after a show last night. It is always so great to see you. Thanks for having us again. I want to ask a, really quickly before we let you get away about this new record. There is always something interesting going on under the surface on your records. Nonagon Infinity had that infinity loop going, which was such a fun and brilliant idea. And I understand that you were exploring microtonal tuning. And first off, I want to know what that is. And then where did you come up with that idea? Sure. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we kind of uh, refretted a, a bunch of guitars and, and, and bass guitar and kind of retuned some 
some keyboards and harmonica to uh, play some some uh, notes that aren't usually e easily accessible on a you know a, a regular Western instrument. Um, I was messing around with a with a balama, which is a um, a Turkish uh, stringed instrument, um, which has kind of movable uh, and uh, non sort of specifically fixed frets. Um, and yeah, I guess um, I started writing some songs on this, on this instrument um, and they had sounds in it that are just not, not easily um, replicated with an electric guitar at all. So um, at first I thought we were making a Balama record um, and uh, yeah, it sort of became more and more obvious that it was going to be more fun to play the songs on electric guitar. So the initial idea was basically to, to refret some guitars to play these songs that I wrote on Balama. And then what happened was all the songs that I wrote on Balama got kind of discarded and we sort of wrote new songs on these guitars. Um, and it's not really, you know, it's sort of, it ended up some kind of weird in, in between place. It's not sort of exactly um, Turkish folk music at all, but it sort of has a loose inspiration from that. I mean, that would that would fret them completely different to what we did, but that was that was the inspiration. It sounds like everybody else was game to give this a try. Was it hard or expensive to reconfigure your instruments, and then hard to kind of make the live show or? Your musicians, so you just sort of adapted to that pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, there was a serendipitous moment where, where a friend of mine said, um, "Hey, I'm 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 going to start building guitars. Uh, it would be cool if you want to like work on a guitar together." So I sort of said, "Hey, yeah, that's that's cool. I kind of got this idea. What about we we build this guitar and kind of fret it sort of unusually?" So um, that was kind of where this guitar came from. Um, and that is the flying microtonal banana, is that which, right? <laughs> yeah, which we named the flying microtonal banana because it's uh, it's sort of like a flying V-ish shape, and it's microtonal um, fret fretboard, and it's and it's yellow. So, um, and and you know this, you know, getting this guitar was was I, I suppose the inspiration for making all of these songs, um, and uh, you know, all but maybe one of them were, were written on on this guitar. So. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and then and then once we kind of had a few ideas, we had to sort of um, we had to uh, uh, modify a few other instruments, which we kind of just got from. Uh, we we sort of just bought the cheapest instruments we could possibly fry, find, um, and we, we sort of like mess them up um, because. Once you do that, it's kind of no turning back. You're sort of ruining instruments in, in, in a sense. Um, so you didn't use your regular instruments. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Like we didn't know whether it was going to be one song or whether it was going to be a whole record at the time, um, or it was going to be an experiment that, which was going to fail. So, yeah, fortunately we made a record, and then we kind of thought it would be cool to tour it. So. Um, it's all kind of just been like one foot in front of the other with this record. You think you might write more songs in this tuning? I mean, now you've got the instruments. Yeah, I, I mean, we sort of are, we've we've written a few other songs, not a, not a record's worth, um, since since making Flying Martin or Banana. Um, so there might be a record worth, or there might be some songs that pop up here and there. Actually, there definitely will be some songs that pop up here and there as well. But maybe another record in the future. But we haven't thought that far. I'm betting there'll be another record in the future. There's never any lack of King Gizzard Records, which is a wonderful thing. You're also super busy touring, and I'm curious if there's going to be a 2017 edition of Gizfest. Yeah, there definitely will be. Uh, Eric is the, the boss of the Gizfest. Um, Eric over here, good day, Matt. Uh, On one of the drum kits. But uh, he's probably going to keep it pretty tight-lipped. But you All know. right, we won't make any secrets come out now. But. What do you think, Eric? Uh, it's happening in November. Oh, Oh, there you right. go. There it's out now. Gizfest, if you want to plan a trip to Australia, that would be a good time to go. Thank you again so much for coming in. It's always so great to see you, and especially appreciate you coming in so early today. Thanks for having us. It's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live on KEXP Seattle. Yay, that was so good. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.